Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today. We're very excited to share with you uh, this exciting new lineup for Rendezvous with French Cinema on its uh, 26th edition. My name is Florence Almozini. I'm a senior programmer at film at Lincoln Center. And I'm sure you've seen my face, uh, heard my voice, and some of my jokes <laughs> for the year, uh, mostly presenting a rendezvous where I flourish um, in this French culture. Uh, my colleague Maddie Whittle uh, is here with us, and she's also going to talk about Rendezvous as we program it together. And we are very pleased to have with us uh, our partner in crime, uh, collaborator for these 26 years uh, from Uni France. So we have uh, Daniela Elster, that is the executive director of Uni France. And of course, Adeline Monzier, that you may also have seen uh, every year. She's a US representative of uh, Unifrans. So we've uh, worked together uh, as every year. Uh, it's a collaboration between these two institutions from Unifrans and the Pima Lincoln Center to present uh, what we consider, uh, if not the best, at least the most exciting, lively, uh, diverse uh, lineup of uh, new films uh, to share with the audience. Unfortunately, this year, we cannot do it uh, physically, which it's something we really, really hoped we were going to be able to. Uh, so it's going to be a virtual edition, but most of the audience is now very familiar with the virtual cinema offered by uh, Lincoln Center. So we hope you will be as faithful and enthusiastic as always. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the lineup, uh, the selection, some things for uh, you to uh, remember, memorize, and mark your calendar, obviously. Uh, the festival is taking place at the usual dates that we have it every year, early March. So it's from March 4th to the 14th on uh, our platform. Uh, and I think maybe to start a little bit this conversation about this edition, I would like to ask Daniela maybe to talk a little bit about the history uh, of uh, Rendezvous and the importance of the festival in general, because it's an important festival wow. both in France and both in the US for commercial and artistic reasons. So Daniela. Well, hello to everyone. Thank you for hosting this talk. Um, thank you, Lincoln Center, for all your work, the whole team. Um, it's a long collaboration that Uni France is very happy to have with you. And um, I have been a former sales agent, and I don't know, I had so many films in this rendezvous. I came so often to New York with films that I'm, I don't want to count anymore because it makes you only older, but, um, but I, it makes a history also, and I think it's something um, you must know in New York that it's something very special for all the filmmakers to be part of this selection because it's the United States, it's New York, it's showing their films in a very important city for them, in a very important country for them. And, um, and it, it has always been, even in my former life as, uh, as, as a sales agent, this, this, are, are we going to be part of the rendezvous? Like the directors asked me or the actors or actresses asked me, and it was always a little bit of fight because it's a selection process and um, um, we do it together. But I would like to thank Florence Maddy because it's a hard work um, this year, especially. So um, we have had a lot of different personalities, also actors, actresses coming. So I think last year um, we had this great, we had scheduled this great opening uh, with uh, Juliette Binoche, Ethan Hawke, and finally the whole French part couldn't travel already. So that was almost one year ago. And I, I think we, what incredible, year has passed and I'm still I really want to thank all of you and especially the public also to be there because um, all this is made for you and uh, the excitement of our artists in France is also because they somehow get to be seen their films are seen by a New York public and it's really I assure you it means a lot for them so uh, thank you and um, well for um, I think that's pretty, uh, I don't, the, the history is really, I think it's also a collaboration and I think we're really doing it. And I'm very um, concerned that we will keep this way of exchange. It's a collaboration between um, Lincoln Center and Unifrance, but it's also two cultures. It's two different ways of watching films. It's two different ways of going to cinema, French, um, as you might know, there's a huge culture of cinema. Well, of course this year it was complicated. It's 
it's in New York. I know that you love our French cinema, so thank you, continue. Um, but still, in the exchange of what kind of films we might program, um, there's always a discussion. And I think this is a very uh, fruitful and important discussion because this comes up to a selection. And really this year, I think it's a very uh, exciting, interesting, um, large selection of different films. Some films have not been released in France, so it's also very important to our film directors who actually know they're part of a festival in New York, whereas their films don't even exist somehow in theaters in, or didn't exist yet in theaters in France. So, um, well, I really hope that you will discover almost all the films during the 10 days, roughly 10 days. And um, we are here now to give you some inside views on these different films that uh, we will present uh, during the 10 days. Uh, so uh, before talking about uh, our personal favorite and some uh, highlights, uh, maybe we can uh, discuss a little bit with Adeline or your point of view about the importance of French cinema actually uh, outside of New York since uh, she's organizing and she's very much in touch with like art house um, who plays French cinema and also like exhibitor. Because we, you know, I mean, for the audience and for us in New York, like Rendezvous is like an exquisite 10 days of French culture, but uh, commercially it's also very important that the brand travels and that other people outside of New York can see the film. So maybe Adeline, you have like a few things to add? Yeah, so um, talking about French cinema uh, in the US, um, commercially speaking, it's interesting because the US market is a very hard market for foreign cinema in general, with Hollywood films and American films uh, taking over more than 95% 95, 95 of the market share in the US. So there is a small percentage that we are all sharing, um, we international cinema, and the good news about French cinema is that it's the biggest of the small. So if you, we usually have more French films released than any other nationalities. So it's between 60 and 80 every year. And our market share is around um, 0 0.5 to 1% market share, uh, whereas the global international cinema market share is around 3%. So um, again, the New York audience is an amazing one, and it's and those numbers are usually much bigger in New York. But if we consider the entire um, United States, where we are going to offer rendezvous this year, these are the 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 trends. 2019 and 2020 were good years for French cinema, despite everything. Before everything shut down, we had um, really good successes, and I just want to mention a few of them. Um, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, which was released very successfully in US theaters, but also uh, Les Miserables, uh, which was our French entry last year, uh, but also I Lost My Body, a French animated film uh, targeting uh, adult audiences or Atlantics. So we had a great uh, lineup and a great and exciting lineup of French films that did really well, uh, both commercially and awards wise uh, last year. Um, and this year, what we're going to try to do with uh, Film at Lincoln Center, since uh, the scope of the festival has widened to the entire country, is to team up with some art houses, cinemas uh, in the US and offer them like a, a taste of rendezvous with French cinema with a few titles that they're going to be able to show to their local audiences. And uh, then uh, if the local audiences want to see more, they're going to be able to watch more uh, on the Film at Lincoln Center um, virtual cinema website. So that's our way of like partnering with the entire country and also not forgetting that uh, 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 the solidarity process in these harsh times, meaning that using the Rendezvous branch, which is a brand that has been uh, existing in the US for 25 years is important and that um, all cinemas in the US can benefit of it while getting giving back as well to uh, Film at Lincoln Center. So that was a little bit uh, background about uh, the commercial aspect of French cinema in the US. It's great because it also shows that uh, our audience or usual audience is also part of this success. So it's like not just us bringing 
the work and sharing the talent and all this, but it's also the fact that this audience is so loyal and faithful to the festival that is also translating into like, a, a, you know, the, uh, the entire country in a way. So that's why it's important that you continue watching uh, the film and uh, giving us feedback about what you liked, what you think is interesting, you know, and, and you know, things, things like this. Uh, it also helps the distributors to release the film um, and to know what the reaction are. Uh, when we are physical, the distributors always come by, see what's happening, seeing the line, the excitement and uh, in the lobby. And it's, it's um, something I actually missed a lot this year, but hopefully uh, next year we'll be all there together in person. Um, I know that what people always like to know is uh, to talk about the, the lineup, uh, to talk about uh, films we have picked. It was a pretty difficult process since we didn't really know what we were gonna invite movies um, and how they would play. We started the process. Uh, it's a long process. It's a good six to eight weeks of preparation. Uh, we were really hopeful that by March, everything would be, you know, semi back to normal and we could have um, screenings in our wild to read cinema. It became obvious that uh, the time was going back, but, uh, by that we would probably be uh, hybrid and then fully uh, virtual. It's not really possible to have outdoor screening right now. Uh, snowstorm, uh, <laughs> there's always snow during rendezvous, but uh, so it's maybe not the best idea uh, to go outdoor. Um, but uh, we are always with uh, the audience when we are watching the film. We like to keep an interaction. We'll have some live talks. Uh, we'll have a different way of presenting and to keep this connection open. Um, I'm gonna maybe to start, I think it would be really nice to hear a little bit more from Daniela about the selection for the opening night film this year, which is a little bit of an unusual, unusual choice. It's the first time we've picked a documentary to open the festival. And, and Daniela, if you could say a little bit more. With great pleasure, a Petite Fille, donc Little Girl, um, that premiered in Berlin last year. It's a film by Sebastian Lifschitz, who's a documentary and feature filmmaker. But uh, the last years were more documentaries than feature films. Um, they all traveled all over the world. And um, uh, the and he won right now, uh, he won just one another award for one of his films here in France, the Prix du Luc for the film before Petite Fille, so he's a very prolific, also he's doing, he did a quite, it's a very hard worker, Sebastian, so uh, he did quite a few documentaries over the last past years. And it is really a great pleasure for me for various reasons, not only because I used to work with Sebastian, but uh, um, it is also, I think for Unifrance, um, very important is in this year's selection process and the way we built up, I mean, you built up the selection. I think it came up at some point together with the distributor Music Box, who is uh, very excited about the film. Um, I think it came up somehow as a possibility because um, as you will see, this film has a very specific way of um, interacting with the audience, the way you go into this family. It's, um, I can say a little bit about the story, I guess, uh, the story about a little a young boy um, who actually from the very first years on was very clear that he doesn't feel at all as a boy. He is a girl, so she. Um, and Sebastian, I can tell you that I was somehow it's a little it's a short story i will tell it because i think it's very um it t tells a lot of things how sebastian prepares his films um i used still to work with him when he started to research and he wanted to do something about uh, um, uh, a family with this kind of uh, maybe experiences and uh, the mother wrote a letter to sebastian explaining why she accepts that her girl um, is ready to be filmed, her girl, her family, everyone is ready to be filmed by Sebastian. And this letter was not very long, it was one page, one and a half pages. And when I read it, I was like crying the whole time. And I thought, well, this film can only be a great film because there was something already installed between Sebastian and the family um, that was obviously to be translated into a film with the way that Sebastian takes his camera 
and it doesn't make you forget about it doesn't it's not about uh, you know there's documentaries always this discussion where is the filmmaker it's not it's subjective object it, it doesn't even matter with Sebastian because he's just there and he invites you to be at this very moment of of in this family within the family within the emotions you feel that there is no restriction and somehow suddenly you get so much emotionally involved and you will see, I'm sure you will be there with them, suffering, laughing, crying, um, feeling this extreme complexity that is really on the shoulders of this whole family and uh, the mother, the girl, everyone, the sisters, brothers, the father. And, um, and you just feel it. And you don't even, when after watching the film, you don't even ask how, how did it happen that I'm there? You just know I was there and I'm there. And then you go out with something that you have to think of and you will live a, quite a while with the film actually and have some images coming back and thinking. And sometimes it's also changing a little bit your mindset after. So, and this for me, actually it's a great opening film because I think that's all we want is cinema that makes you emotional, that makes you thinking, that makes you changing maybe your mindset that makes you thinking differently when you walk out. And I think this is a great achievement for all filmmakers. And Sebastian does it very well. So I'm happy, I'm <laughs> very happy. <laughs> we, we are very happy with um, the, the selection for uh, opening night. It's a movie that um, we wanted to show anyway, and we're really glad we find a, a really good uh, context and a way to highlight this film. So we know that people will pay special attention to it. Uh, it's. Um, not an easy subject. As you said, it's uh, very emotional, it's very moving. It's also a work that uh, is not obviously politicized, but will become uh, a way that could be politicized and will move people maybe to change things too. Uh, so we're really glad to, to have this film. Uh, maybe uh, to talk a little bit about uh, selection uh, at large, uh, as always with uh, Rendezvous with French Cinema, it's something we've mentioned uh, through the years. There's a really great uh, parity of uh, men and female uh, filmmaker. It's something that's very representative of the French industry uh, and a certain uh, equality uh, allowing a woman to, to work, to make feature film, to be producers, not just to be uh, actresses or uh, the makeup uh, girl or something like this. And there's, um, it's something that we always noted and I think could be an inspiration for the film industry. So we have uh, seven filmmakers out of 18 films. Uh, we did add a few more, we lost five. <laughs> uh, nothing terrible happened to them. It just, uh, because of the pandemic, some distribution uh, deals uh, didn't work out. Uh, some uh, dates have been pushed out. So, but we were over 50% this year, which was very nice, but we're still very close. So, uh, there's also a lot of uh, first film because um, what's important for Rendezvous, it's obviously to show great, great French film. Uh, there's a name recognition that comes uh, with French cinema ever since the 30s and the French New Wave. There's always some name and a filmmaker that come every year. But at the same time, it's a very lively, it's a very uh, exciting uh, industry where a lot of people come with a new way of making films. There's usually either uh, animation, documentaries, uh, people trying to mix uh, their own language with uh, uh, ideas of uh, what a French film would be. And we are very excited to have, I think we have seven uh, first features in the lineup. So it's a, it's a very exciting exciting year for, um, and for the festival, even so it was not an easy lineup to, to bring together. <laughs> Uh, I know we all have a lot of different favorites, so we probably will not mention all the 18 films, but maybe Maddie, would you like to talk about some films that uh, you thought were uh, very special, something you'd like to share to the audience and tell them why they should not miss them? Yes, thank you. Um, first, let me say that um, this is a very special edition for me because it's the sixth edition of the festival that I will have worked on. Uh, as a member of the programming team at Film at Lincoln Center, but it is the first edition that I've been really actively involved in the selection process. Um, and it's a real honor and, and very, very exciting to be part of these conversations about uh, bringing these films uh, to a New York audience. Um, so just wanted to mention that. 
Um, it's it's a great it's a great lineup this year. It's very hard to pick a favorite. Um, so I will just mention a few uh, of the films that really stood out to me. One that I just to get the ball rolling. Um, that's a very quiet film uh, directed by a woman, Fabienne Goudet, uh, is called Lifelines. Um, and I really, really appreciated the delicate touch of this film. It's a very intimate sort of um, introspective film about one woman who sort of sets off to solve a mystery. She receives a mysterious package in the mail and uh, is sort of fixated on the question of where it came from and what is the story of the, the person who sent it and why did they send it to me? And so she goes kind of on a journey uh, to make sense of this mystery. And uh, it's, she's getting over a bad breakup. And so it's sort of a, it's a, a point in her life where it, she's on the cusp of something and um, just really, really beautiful performances, uh, a lovely script. And um, I think uh, it's, again, it's a quieter film. And so it, it may not be, uh, as sort of um, buzzy as some of the other films in the lineup, but I think it's it's very much worth your time. Um, and then another one um, that's sort of sort of on a similar wavelength uh, is called Marco Arkman, uh, which is about a uh, middle-aged woman who uh, has recently been widowed and decides to go back to school to get another degree, and it's sort of a new beginning for her, and she. Uh, makes friends with younger students and uh, becomes involved in a romance and um, sort of works through the process of trying to make sense of what she wants the rest of her life to look like. Um, again, it's, it's quiet, it's low key, um, but uh, really, really, it's a movie that like, like Little Girl, like Daniela was saying, it will stick, the feelings and, and thoughts that it stirs up will stay with you. And um, I think, uh, also, Argo is played by Emmanuel Béard. Of course, yes, yeah. of course, the, the, the great. So uh, if for no other reason, uh, it's worth it just to watch her, her marvelous performance. Um, so I have other movies that I can call out, but I'll, I'll let the rest of the group uh, speak and then maybe we can come back around. Mm -hmm. uh, Adeline, would you like to tell us some of your personal uh, favorites or highlights, things that you strongly recommend? So yes, as Maddie was saying, it's hard uh, to pick just a few titles because it is a great and eclectic uh, lineup and each film deserves to be seen. But if I had to pick uh, a couple, I would start with um, Slalom, which is a, a debut feature by a young woman filmmaker and it premiered uh, in the virtual Cannes Film Festival uh, last May. Um, it's um, for me. It was the best scene, I, best film I've seen in Cannes. I mean, I was really struck by that story. It's uh, it tells the story of um, of a teen skier who has um, an abusive sexual relationship with her coach, and um, of course, in the make in the wake of the Me Too movement, etc. This is a very timely movie. But it's also more than that. I mean, it's set in the French Alps. You have some amazing um, skiing scenes, which brings both uh, some kind of mystery, but also a chilling environment. And the film really asks the question uh, uh, in a very complex way, what, what does it mean uh, to, to consent to a relationship when you're 15 years old and when you're facing, uh, you know, power and, and, um, and when you're hoping for success as a young skier. And um, I thought this was done in a very, very subtle way. And the um, lead actress, Noé Abita, she won a, a few awards um, in, uh, in, in French and international film festivals. And, it's, uh, and she's part of our 10 to watch um, uni friends list. And she's really, standing out in this um, in this movie. So um, highly recommended. It's a filmmaker to watch, uh, Charlene Fazier, Favier. And the film is gonna open with Kino Lauber later in the spring. So you can catch it also uh, later. 
Um, and the, the other film I'd like to um, point out is um, uh, The Donkey, My Donkey, My Lover and I, Antoinette dans les Cévennes in French, which is a, a comedy, again, directed by a woman filmmaker. It's a second feature. Uh, it was also uh, at the Cannes Film Festival uh, last May. And um, it starts as a romantic comedy, you know, like basic situation, uh, a, a teacher who is in, involved with one of the uh, parents uh, in her class. And then she goes after him on a hike uh, in the south of France. And then it, 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 it transforms into a, a kind of buddy movie, buddy story between a woman and her donkey. And it's just the two of them, you know, doing that hike, reflecting on life and, and mm -hmm. love and everything. And it's just a, a, a very beautiful film with hilarious scenes. I mean, I really laughed. It's weird to laugh on your own when you're sitting on your couch, but I did laugh a lot watching this movie. And, um, but it also tells you a lot about, you know, um, philosophy of life and what it means to, 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 to love when you're in your like 40s and when you want to do something specific with your life. And so I really recommend it. Again, an amazing performance by um, a French actress called Laure Calamy. And she's not that well known in the US. I mean, she's been in a, in a, in a show Uh, in the TV show Call My Agent, so people might know her from that show, but in French cinema, she's um, she's not that well known in the US, but she should be uh, more known because she is really an amazing actress. Every time she appears on screen, she's both funny and moving, and especially in this film. So those would be my two highlights uh, from the festival among a lot of great, great films. Thank you, Adeline. Um, Daniela, I think you also could talk about a couple of other titles in addition to what you said about uh, Little Girl. Yes, of course. So of course, we love all of the films we have at the festival. I just uh, maybe two films that struck me in a way during last year. Um, both of them were part of the label Can uh, the Can edition last year. Um, we have a film called um, Says Printemps, and I always have to, the English title is... Uh, Spring Brassum. Uh, Spring Brassum. Um, it's a film by Suzanne Landon. Uh, she's now 20, so she was 18, 19 when she shot the film. And um, it's a story about a teenage girl, 16 years old, not really... Um, she doesn't feel very comfortable, very... She doesn't talk really to her friends. She doesn't feel to belong to them, and she falls gets attracted, falls step by step in love with a man who's an actor actually in a theater near her home. And uh, their story, which is a very, very particular, very well sensed, not at all. Um, it's, it's a love story above all with, with only feelings and, and, and very, very touching scenes, but nothing, um, uh, it always stays in a very um, uh, sensitive and emotional way. And uh, it never is on the top of anything that you would think is not right. And I think this is very impressive because it's a 18, 19 year old girl um, who made this film. Um, uh, and I think there's a maturity in the way she films, the way she uses music, the way she uses uh, um, the actor's capacity. So she's uh, playing also the main character, which usually I always say, oh my God, this will be, it's so difficult to do that, but she manages it very well. And um, I think it's, an, it's a great invitation on a, a, a story of a teenage girl who um, has so many, much, who is so much more mature than her age. But on the other hand, she's still also sometimes a little girl, which um, if you talk about little girls, but, um, and, um, and she doesn't hide it. So um, it's also very emotional with her parents. Um, and uh, well, I really, um, I think it's a film to discover. She's part of our tend to watch too, and she's going to be for sure someone who will be watched. I don't want to go into her personal life details because yes, she's a daughter of uh, well-known actors, but I don't think uh, it's much more. 
So I, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, and I'm really happy that she's part of the selection. Her film got sold very well all over the world. So um, I think it's a very nice start. Um, and I think real talent, as you said, we have a lot of female talents. So uh, Charlene Favier, Favier is one of them of Slalom. She's one of the others. Um, so she, for me, is very uh, brilliant start of a career. And um, the other film is Gagarin, um, which um, uh, is a co-direction, co uh, Fanny Liatar, Jeremy Trouy, donc both of them made a film um, and uh, in the suburbs of, um, of Paris, which um, you might think somehow we've seen it all. And we had such a great film last year, as has been said, uh, with Les Miserables, allegedly, and it was such a um, powerful film that went, had a great career in the US and went far up to the Oscar game. Um, but then suddenly both of them came up with a new perspective and a new proposal, which is a very different proposal. And it strikes you that um, it's about a young boy, also here, teenage, uh, um, alone, uh, his parents, you don't really know. They, I mean, his mother, he has this sort of contact, but it doesn't matter to he's alone. And he's in one of these buildings in the suburbs that has, will be um, destroyed. And he refuses to leave because it's also his neighborhood, it's his city, it's his home, it's his family, it's his everything. And he starts in a very poetical way. Both of the directors tell, tell you the story of this, this, this young boy who has his, not much of a family, but he has a huge family in this suburb, um, uh, suburb system. And um, sometimes it's also very funny because he sees the things maybe very differently than another director would have seen it. And it suddenly, you go in from a very different side. There's also something where people in the neighborhood stand to each other, even if there is a lot of interracial problems, etc. cetera. But um, there's also something that has been created in these cities and there is a kind of home for, for many people. And it's like this and um, the way, the film goes on and they suggest it's a very poetical way because this, this young boy actually dreams of being an astronaut and he builds everything around himself in the way that one day he somehow literally or, <laughs> or in a poetical way he might be part of, of, of this whole astronaut um, system. And that, so I think it's very um, interesting to watch these films. Like if you have seen Miserable, for instance, last year, and you will watch Gagarin, um, there are a lot of things that respond. There are some things that don't. And there is especially a real different proposal of seeing things. And I think both of them come together also in a way. So, and if you have not seen Miserable, but you will see a very poetic way into going into suburbs with no hiding of the problems. And I think this is also very important because they ask a lot of questions and the questions they ask um, are relevant, I think, to all of us, whether you are in France in Europe or in the States, because it's human, it's, it's questions about humanity, about your point of view, about where you belong to and what your dreams are. So I think it's a very powerful film um, and I hope you will like it <laughs> as much as we did it. Still not released in France, so. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, it has an American distributor, uh, Cohen Media. Yeah. So, Sorry, uh, I mentioned um, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, there's, and there's um, Spring Blossom too. So, uh, um, so it's Kim Stim. So we really have to thank all these distributors because you know, you probably don't know so much as a public, but they are so important because they do all this work. They take the films, they watch them, they buy them, they put them out into the theaters. They have the help with the Lincoln Center for a festival, but then they also have a big risk on their side. And really thank you for all distributors huh? because your work is very precious to us. It, it's true. Uh, also, like part of uh, Rendezvous, some films that we premiere also then get picked up uh, after premiering in the festival. We don't always uh, select films because we have a uh, distributor, but uh, what happened is like we work closely with a lot of uh, distributors, they trust our taste, they trust the audience reaction when we see the film here, uh, and then they end up uh, uh, distributing uh, the film to a larger audience, which is always um, very uh, uh, rewarding for, for us. Um, I have also a, a lot of favorites. I mean, obviously as programmers, all the films are our favorites, uh, but I also know that some films don't really need uh, 
uh, me to really uh, highlight them as uh, we will always uh, have some returning directors, you know, with a new film by Francois Ozon, which is really delightful. And I'm sure the audience is already familiar with Francois' work. We have a new uh, Quentin Dupieux, which is one of our like favorite uh, funny boy every year. He has like some sort of like surreal, completely irrealistic comedy that are completely nuts about uh, how to uh, adopt a fly, to fly as a drone to become rich. I can't even summarize this better, <laughs> but it's it's pretty fun. Um, but we also have like a, a new film by Guillaume Braque, who is uh, still a, a sort of up and coming director in France. So he's made um, a film for the last nearly 10 years, uh, including a few that were in Rendezvous, uh, like Tonnerre, I think Treasure Island, and uh, um, Comte de Juillet, July Tale. Uh, he's a filmmaker who works very much in the genre of the French New Wave, but um, a little bit Romer, but specifically, I think Jacques Crozier. Uh, he has this sort of uh, same sense of humor, using characters who are a little bit lost in their ways and uh, bumbling about. It's a summer romance uh, between uh, a young couple that only meet for one night and then she goes on vacation, the guy wants to follow her. It's all sort of like a weird way of finding her. Uh, it's a story of friendship too, but he also tells about like the social class in France, uh, or you see uh, someone who's not the same skin color as you or in a certain like vacation environment. Uh, and it's, it's, it's very humorous, but it's also, uh, he has a lot of art. Uh, and it's a filmmaker I really always um, uh, comment on when we have a film by him. Uh, I really like Faithful, uh, De Nos Frères Blessés uh, by uh, Elias Sisterns, uh, also a young filmmaker who's made um, a couple of films before. It stars uh, the amazing Vicky Cripps uh, that you know from Phantom Thread and Vincent Lacoste, our usual uh, French comedian, but is uh, reaching uh, out to a new range of um, drama and uh, more serious film. Uh, it's a movie that deals with uh, the French-Algerian war um, in a very um, artful uh, and a very romantic way. So it's based on a true story of this uh, young uh, communist that was really fighting against the, the French colony system uh, to help his uh, Algerian brothers. Uh, while being in a love story with his wife, who's uh, coming from communist country as a Polish uh, uh, immigrant, uh, and dealing with uh, how much can you do for what you believe is right uh, against or for your country, since at the time, uh, fighting for Algeria for someone French was fighting against his country. Uh, and at the same time, being in a really uh, strong love story for people who have completely point of view, different point of view, but still believe in each other. It's very moving. Um, and uh, even if you don't know that it's based on a true story, it really resonates. So it's a movie I really liked. Um, and there's a lot of movies also uh, from the younger uh, side uh, of the filmmaker. I think I would just quickly recommend uh, Shoot the Wind Drop, which is the first film by uh, Nora Marti Rosayan. Uh, it's a movie that's set um, in Armenia, or actually in the uh, High Karabakh region. So it's also very timely if you follow the international events. As you know, there's uh, been a war going on between Armenia and uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, so she takes, um, the director takes uh, the point of view of uh, a French auditor who's traveling there to build a new airport, but it also has to deal with uh, the tradition of the region and when uh, the modernity could set up. And it's not just modernity because it's also a question of uh, life. It's a question of war. It's a question of the future. Uh, it's uh, very well done. It's led by um, Grégoire Collin, that you may know from the Claire Denis film, uh, in a, also in a very interesting role. So it's a, it's a movie that I find um, uh, very memorable and I hope people will uh, We'll try to check it, check it out. Um, we will have Q and A's also, but we will not be live Q and A's. Uh, we will record uh, as many Q and A's 
uh, as possible that they will be attached to the screening. So you will get to hear a lot from uh, the filmmakers, um, which is always interesting to, you know, it's always an interesting dialogue. We hope we'll, uh, we'll be um, developing that side enough for the audience uh, while not being able to be there physically. We will also do some talks and other initiatives. I think Adeline could talk a little bit about uh, other initiatives that uh, Rendezvous does every year that the audience may not be aware of, but that are very important. Uh, maybe educational screening. So Adeline, if you would like to say some words about that. Yeah, so we've been doing uh, school screenings uh, with Rendezvous for the last uh, four or five years, I think. And every year it's, uh, it's always a, a very rewarding moment, both for FEMA at Lincoln Center and uni friends to see uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers and college students gathering uh, in the Walter Reed and um, watching a French movie, sometimes for the first time and um, laughing and crying without even thinking about the subtitles. I mean, we are always told that Americans hate subtitles, but I think when once they love the movie, they just forget about them. And um, those school screenings remind us of that. Um, we usually bring uh, between uh, 400 and 600 students. Um, and this year we're gonna try uh, as much as we can to um, gather students for virtual screenings and offer them a recorded Q&A after that in order to maintain the tradition because we feel that we need uh, those young people to um, discover French cinema at a very early age and to uh, get this habit of uh, not being afraid of watching a movie they've never heard of or a filmmaker they've never heard of, but just being curious about watching uh, a new film, um, usually on a big screen. Mm -hmm. And this is part of the job of uh, UniFrance and Film at Lincoln Center is to, um, of course, scatter the cinephiles of today, but also think of the cinephiles of tomorrow and start with these kinds of initiatives to, um, uh, to train them, to offer them, <laughs> train them maybe is a harder word, but uh, maybe offer them um, something different that they will remember and uh, start their cinephile culture with uh, Rendezvous. It, it's always a very moving to see all these kids coming to watch the French films. Um, we try to watch them with them through their eyes and we never really notice the exact same thing as they do. Uh, but it's uh, it's 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 always um, and it's a great audience. There, uh, I find them very respectful, very quiet, uh, and uh, they are so excited when they can meet a filmmaker. But even as yeah, uh, and, and what is always yeah. interesting is with is that we have the you know the usual Manhattan schools who are always you know eager to do a, to offer a field trip to their students. But we also had schools from. Um, four different boroughs. So we had schools from Queens, we had schools from the Bronx, uh, from Brooklyn, never from Staten Island, but the, so it's a very also diverse audience. Um, and that was very important to us, not to just to reach out to the, you know, wealthier schools in Manhattan, but to really offer these uh, films to um, a, a lot of students throughout New York City and mainly public schools. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, there's uh, always a lot of uh, different initiatives that we try to do every year. We try to uh, bring a little bit of um, extra life uh, into uh, the festival. We don't, we are not blasé uh, of working on the lineup. We are not blasé of uh, doing something that uh, is for me, it's always exciting every year, like to, to get new films and, and to meet new directors and new talents. So we want to keep the excitement alive, uh, thanks to everyone. Um, I think uh, we have covered uh, pretty well um, what we could say about uh, Rendezvous and this year's edition. I think what's very important for now for the audience is to really mark their calendar uh, as soon as they get the schedule uh, in advance to see when uh, what film they really want to see. 
uh, will have uh, longer time periods than a lot of other festivals, uh, which offer appointment viewing for like four hours. And it is a little difficult, I think, for audience to suffer from <laughs> a quick appointment when life is already a little um, difficult. And I just add something I, I really would like to thank all our artists because they are really very, I said they are very excited of being in New York, no they can't. So they are really all, uh, they will be participating to have these discussions um, uh, recorded and I, I, I just remind everyone it, it's really something also they have to put into the schedule some of them are shooting so they are really um, very helpful and they accept and they love it to come and uh, they usually come a lot to, to our offices and our screening room so we can record uh, and register there and um, I hope that their messages will come out to you and you will feel and perceive this feeling that they are so sad not to be in the theater with you, but or but as you are also sitting at home, but like that we can't be together and share this moment of cinema that is so important to share. Um, and and um, But they did their best somehow. And so I really want to thank them. And of course you, the public um, also, because I hope you get the messages of our artists. So. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Florence and Maddy, <laughs> for thank your you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It, was, uh, it was a nice team. Uh, it was nice to be together via this Zoom. And I hope that the audience will uh, uh, feel the love coming out of this uh, special uh, virtual edition. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. And yes. we'll see you soon, uh, virtually or hopefully physically. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.